All right, sixth graders, today we are wrapping up our part of looking at solving equations by looking at two-step equations. For this lesson, let's go ahead and start with a real-life example of when you might use a um, two-step equation. Mechanics bill to repair Mr. Wong's car was $650. The mechanic charges $45 an hour for labor, and that... Um, and the parts that were used cost $443. We want to know how many hours did the mechanic work on the car. So here we can try and set up a situation. We know that the total bill was $650. And it's $45 an hour, so that's our rate. Um, and the parts were $443. That's our constant. Um, that has that part is not going to change. So here we have 443 plus the $45 per hour, so times H, going to equal our $650. Now if we work backwards, because we added the 443, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take away the money that was spent on parts, so we can focus on just the labor. These will cancel out, and we get 45H is equal to, and then if I do the 650 minus 443, I get 207. And now it's just a one-step equation. Since it's 45 times H, I do the inverse, which is divide. And I get that H is equal to 4.6 hours. Now we could use a table to decide whether our answer is reasonable. So if you start looking here, for one hour of labor plus the parts, it would be 448. For two hours, 533, 578, 623, 668. So since the bill was in between 623 and 668, at 650, it puts it closer to that 668, so that 4.6 would be a reasonable answer. So now it's your turn. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video and try this one out. See if you can come up with an equation and then solve it. So once again, our total bill is $850. This time they're charging $35 an hour and the parts were $275. So $850 is equal to $35 an hour plus our $275. I'm going to get rid of the parts by subtracting $275. And now I have 575 is equal to 35H. I'm going to do the inverse of multiplying, which is dividing. And now we get, ends up being a really long decimal, but if we round to the nearest tenth, about 16.4 hours. So once again, that 850. And if we looked at our table, so that um, is in between 16 and 17, so our 16.4 would be a reasonable answer. Now let's look at some equations without any context. So we're just looking at straight equations. So we're solving n divided by 3 plus 7 is equal to 22. So if you remember I said solving equations is much like working backwards. So I always start by identifying my variable term. In this case it's n divided by 3. If you want, draw that line down the middle, and now we're undoing what's happening, and we're getting rid of any constants or other numbers because we're going to keep that variable term, which is our variable, of, and what is either being multiplied or divided by. So here, since we have a positive 7 and it's plus 7, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 7 from both sides. Now I have n over 3, and if I did 22 minus 7, I get 15 as an answer. Now since it's n divided by 3, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3, so n is going to equal 45. Alright, here's another example. Um, on this particular example, because we have y minus 4 on top of a fraction, we're going to treat that like it's our variable term, so I'm going to put parentheses, because remember that's going to be grouped together. So if I'm working backwards, I have to think about undoing 
what happens last. So in this case it's that dividing by 3. So I'm actually going to multiply both sides by 3 first. Now I have y minus 4 is equal to 27. Since it's y minus 4, I'm going to go ahead and add 4 to both sides because I'm doing the opposite. And y is going to equal 31. So now it's your turn again, so why don't you go ahead and pause video, try this one out, and see how you do. So for me, once again, I'm identifying that variable term. I'm going to do the opposite, so since it's plus 8, I'm minusing 8. And now I have n over 4 is equal to 10. And I ask myself what's happening to the variable. I'm dividing by 4, so the inverse would be to multiply. And now n is equal to 40. Now I will be honest that typically when I solve equations, I do it the way that we I just showed you. However, I want to show you why it's so important to understand that when you're performing an operation, you're doing it to the entire side in order to keep the equation balanced. Because there's actually another way that we can look at this problem. When we look at n over 4 plus 8 is equal to 18, say instead of getting rid of the 8 first, you decide you want to get rid of the denominator of 4. So one thing we can do is multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator. So I'm going to multiply this side by the denominator, which is 4, I'm going to multiply the right side by the denominator, which is 4. Now here, remember that 4 gets distributed to both parts. The 4 is still cancel out like they normally would, and you're left with n. 4 times 8 gives us 32, because I distributed that 4 times the 8. I'm multiplying it by the entire side. Now I have to also multiply by 4 on the other side. So if I do 18 times 4, I get 72. And now it's solving a one-step equation, so since we're adding, I'm going to subtract 32, because that's the opposite, and 72 minus 32 gives us 40, which was the same answer we had before, just another way to look at the problem. Once again, your turn to solve this problem on your own. So here, we're going to start by multiplying by the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. I'm left with y minus 7 is equal to 14. So I'm going to go ahead and add 7. So y is equal to 21. All right, and here is your lesson quiz. So if you hop on Edmodo, uh, it should be posted. You can try this one out just to see how, you know, how you are after watching the video.